all of us at uh, nwmi all of us at nwmi network of women in media india it's been going on in the national group as well as in the local i mean uh, as well as in the group where we have people journalists from tamil nadu and uh, uh, chennai so basically there were discussions and when we realized that there were many uh, lo lots of national organizations including press, press clubs from other uh, you know other states and uh, uh, other chapters of nwmi they are going to protest we immediately thought we should also be doing something like this so i mean i think it was a very organic way of responding to uh, to something as draconian as this you you can't respond as an organization as an individual as a journalist i don't think there is no other way to respond this uh, to this kind of uh, what do i say terror unleashed on a news organization except by protesting and all we can do is to protest you know that's that's the only thing we can keep doing uh that's why we didn't we didn't think it as i mean uh, it was basically an idea of women journalist forum but uh we were very sure from the beginning that it shouldn't be kind of uh, confined to women journalists we wanted to make this platform available to anyone who wanted to protest not just journalists that's why uh, you could have seen lots of non journalists also turned up so basically the idea was to everybody had something to say had something to vent out but there was not no platform to do it i think we kind of facilitated it today so it is very clear that these guys sitting in delhi are scared of the press any press that does anything of note basically says that the government is doing a lot of mistakes and those mistakes need to be corrected and every single piece of journalism is intended to correct those mistakes and not just point out and say that these are very bad guys no the system has a problem and that is what is being you know you know constantly that is what is coming out whether it's a broader issue whether it's a farmers agitation whether it's a caa protest caa why are you keeping out a large number of hindu uh, sri lankan tamil refugees out of the gamut of the caa what is your problem why are you not giving them citizenship there, this is one question that i need to ask on caa there is enough and more questions farm laws why are you doing farm laws for um, uh, adani you should be doing farm laws for the people of the country voters of the country these are questions that a lot of people have asked with reasons giving out a lot of uh, you know proof and data and all of that they are scared of those questions you should ask no questions of the emperor this guy narendra modi today has become an emperor and he is making it very very clear that he will not accept anything other than obeisance as a manner of expression of your freedom of expression and that is why you have an actor who a canadian actor going and sitting and asking how do you eat uh, eat your mango these are the kind of questions that narendra modi loves or questions like uh, you know how are you looking so fresh at the end of the day after you know uh, 18 hours of work and all of that who works for 18 hours nobody does the nsa might work for 18 hours the uh, chiefs of security forces might work for 18 hours no other nobody else works and it is very clear that narendra modi what he is trying to do is to build a country on a cult and he is the cult he is the person who will deliver everything and he cannot be questioned that is the thing that they are trying to construct by throwing more and more fearless journalists into jail so that others get scared people who are who have an emi to pay people who have parents to take care of people who have children in school they get scared that is the idea this is a larger issue of freedom of the press so it's not my personal issue alone uh, and freedom of the press is threatened by this act against news click what is even more worrisome is that a foreign newspaper which has written consistently about the excesses of this government about the lapses and the sins of commission of this government comes up with an article where news click is mentioned in passing literally as part of some geopolitical larger uh, you know uh, uh, story where they are looking at the world uh, at the us versus china what i what i called a cold war two kind of uh, you know situation and news click becomes the collateral damage because of that and that i think is uh, very very worrisome because if you're going to take cues from foreign magazines on the one hand you say that they are mis misrepresenting what is happening here and then on the other hand you take a cue from that in order to uh, go after journalists and, and and use a draconian provision like uapa on the other hand 
the government level, you have very cordial relations with the same China. You know, your balance of trade in India is always in, you know, one of the biggest trading partners. And the person who initiated that, in fact, fast-tracked this whole China uh, association was Modi himself as Chief Minister of Gujarat. So, one is at a loss to understand what is the politics behind this. What is the... So, it looks like a very, very... Uh, uh, you know, malicious uh, attack on the press, and that is what is what is it. And Newsplick, Newsplick actually just represents that. Uh, so th th that is a that is a bigger worry here, and uh, therefore I think it's important. I, I'm very heartened in some sense to see that across the country uh, there has been a kind of uh, uh, upsurge, if not of the nature that we, it should have been. At least there are pockets of you know uh, concern that are expressed in in meetings like this. Unfortunately. I think I must also mention that the, the editorial, uh, managerial level or the editorial levels of, 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 news, of newspapers or news organizations, news establishments, continue to think that this doesn't affect them. I think they are mistaken. Uh, because this is not an issue of the working journalists alone. It's an issue of freedom of the press. And if that is eroded, it was eroded so far, and that is attacked, you know, blatantly like this, then your entire profession, your entire, uh, uh, you know, reason for your existence is, is pulled from under you. The carpet is pulled from under your feet. And therefore, I think it's high time that the fraternity stood together. Freedom of the press is indivisible. It cannot be restricted to this or that portal or this or that channel or this or that newspaper. You cannot say this affects only newspapers, not channels. This affects only channels, not portals. The moment you start Doing that, you are falling into their game, into the, into the trap of the government. Any government, by and large, you know, the role of the press is to be adversarial to the government, by and large. Not, not promote government policies only, not be a publicity agent for the government. For that, there are PR departments. There is DAVP, there is PRD. You know, there, there, there are state governments and national governments have departments which do that. They should not expect the press, the free press, so-called free press, to perform that function. Then the free press becomes a joke. It becomes a contradiction in terms. It's not free, you know, it becomes a bridal press. It becomes a kept press, as it is called, rather uncharitably. So this is a, this is a reason why this is a kind of defining moment. What happened to News Click has become the last straw on the camel's back, in my view. It is not a it, it, if it's an isolated incident. I don't think we would have seen that spontaneous kind of reaction to it. It is a it is a, it is a last straw on the cam, camel's back, and we have been seeing this. It's a serial performance, as far as the government is concerned. Journalist after journalist after journalist. UAPAs. Uh, you know, used against them. We know the story of Siddiq Kapan, who had to spend, you know, a long time behind bars in, in, in terrible conditions before the courts intervened finally, and he's, he's out. So, this is a... You, it looks like journalism has to fight uh, every inch of the way to stay out <laughs> of jail, not to go behind bars. That cannot, that place, such a place cannot be called a democracy by any stretch of the imagination. This attack on NewsClick, on Prabir, on the entire contributor, staff, ex-staff, everybody, is not just an attack on one institution, one organization, one independent journalist organization. Neither is it only on the press. We must remember that the right to express opinion and thought and ask difficult questions is the right of every citizen, right to thought. Right to privacy is the right of every citizen. So when the government, you know, harasses press organizations, the first they do is they're telling, in, telling in individual citizens, look, they are being attacked, you don't talk. We live in a social media internet age when every citizen expresses an opinion. Every citizen is their opinion on social media through comments, through tweets, etc. Every one of them will stop asking questions. You may not even ask questions on what happened in your next road. You may not want to ask difficult questions because you're scared, tomorrow you're a nobody. So this is an attack on every one of us. Secondly, the press's job is to make us think. The press's job is to go to places where we can't go. The press's job is to ask difficult questions of the government. The press's job is to make sure the governments are all kept on their toes. If the press is not allowed to do that, we will create a dumb thoughtless, unthinking society. And that's what this government wants to create. A society that will just nod its head to everything it says and does. This is not a society we want. This is not what we signed up for when we got independence. This is not what our constitution says. So every citizen has to stand up today. Please remember, the most affected will be marginalized people. Marginalized people people from very marginalized community in the press, 
in villages doing the hard work, they will be most affected. And remember when they come for you, as they say, there will be nobody left standing to stop them. This is a definite assault on media freedom in India. And this is an unprecedented assault on media freedom in India. And we could see that this was coming because uh, there have been sporadic assaults on media freedom in, the, in India, particularly after the BJP came to power in 2014. But it was building up to this moment and particularly with these raids of uh, about 50 journalists on a single day, this has become the peak of assault on media freedom in India. This is uh, a big threat to Indian democracy. And if we don't uh, step up our activity and uh, protest and uh, push back now, we are going to be losing our democracy. That is what I strongly feel as an independent journalist. I feel this small operations of news click is now challenged with the actions of the government. And the government, if it feels that it has to safeguard democracy, it has to apologize for the actions it has taken, which is highly unlikely, unless the Supreme Court intervenes and it tells the government that this assault on democracy is not pardonable, the government will not step down. The government should step back and introspect. That is our demand to the government at this point in time. We strongly condemn this uh, action of the union government. And this is definitely not something that any democracy will like. Put a mato, put a mato,